So, hello and welcome back to the next episode of the Self-Development with Tactics podcast. And I'm now here again uh, with a book we've all been gone through. Maybe you are, maybe. I am definitely. And this is definitely also just the really last episode of this book. And you might already know what I'm talking about. It's, um, what is it actually called? It's definitely by John Hall. Top of Mind, John Hall. Um, which is a good book, yeah. Do not get me wrong. But I've been just going through it way too fucking long. Um, I do not really want to say that I just it was just boring for me or I just didn't like to. But I kind of feel felt like okay, you know, I'm doing the same shit over and over again, and you know, quite uh, quite often. And um, this is then something that I particularly don't like that much. You know, I like to just you know have a few things to do. I'm not always doing just the same shit. I kind of find that boring. I kind of think like. Um, it is boring for you as well, though, you know, I think. And I'm very sorry, I do just have a lot of problems with quite everything today. But this just leads me to a pretty great point. I leave it like this. I think this is good like this. I hope it is everything going. Maybe just make it a little bit darker here. So that it's not that pissing you off maybe if it just <laughs> um am i kind of different today no everything is good uh, i do just remember to do this yeah now everything is okay i hope and i quite feel like that i'm kind of delayed i'll do just have to i'm very sorry for um, what the fucking hell? Hello? Yeah, I think it's okay. You know, even though I might be a little bit delayed, I can't actually see. Am I? No. A little bit. I would say a little bit, but... Yeah. What should you do? What should you do? Yeah, never mind. <laughs> and we are going ahead with Top of Mind by John Hull. And... Sorry. No. What the freaking hell? Hmm. Uh... Yeah, now everything with without, the close-up is working, okay. Everything is working, and now I can finally start after three minutes in without saying quite anything. And I do, by the way, hope that everything is kind of clear and everything is sounding good, because I kind of feel like the fans are a little bit too, um, too, too noisy today. But yeah, I shouldn't, I shouldn't complain about anything. Everything is good. I do just have everything in my life that I quite need. Even though today might not have been the best day for me. Um, I do just want to talk about this a little bit. Um, because I do feel like a lot of people then say, okay, you know, it wasn't my day. It was a bad day. But at the end, I think like, you know, there is not a bad day. You know, there is not such, such a thing as a bad day. I kind of would say, okay, this is a day where I've learned quite a lot. Maybe a lot about me, maybe a lot about the universe, maybe a lot about why things piss me on and what things piss me on and so on and so on and so on. Or what could go just wrong or not that well and what could well could go well and so on. I would just never say that this is a day, um, it is a bad day or it is, or it's just something else that's so negative. I kind of feel like, okay, saying... Okay, this is a day that I've learned quite a lot from is actually kind of working way better than just being so negative all the fucking time because actually people are always fucking negative and don't be like this, please don't because you you aren't making your life better through this, you know, you are making your life even worse because if you're just focusing on the fucking negative, which is totally something that I've been talking about quite often, and then it will just only get the negative, you know, it, it is what it is, I kind of believe in it, I do, do not kinda, but I deeply believe in it, but, but yeah, 
Um, we will go ahead with content funnels and customers, which is definitely a topic that I'm quite interested in as well. And I'm quite trying to today, just being a little bit slower with the things uh, in terms of the reading, in terms of the speaking, not being being enthusiastic about it, but not too fast and not too, just some kind of sloppy, I kind of feel like. So content funnels and customers. The journeys, or actually that journey, and I do not actually know if I've been going through this one, so this kind of paragraph or this just a uh, little thing here before, but I think you will go through uh, it, you know, anyways. And if I'm just running out of time, I will just, you know, I will today really, um, I think at least, <laughs> um, work on this one as long as I'm just finished. Because I do want to just finish this one. I, uh, uh, yeah, don't want to see it tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, the best serve your, to best serve your audience, you have to completely understand each stage of their journey and create a funnel so that their path leads to you. The first one is the problem identification and awareness. The journey begins when the buyer becomes aware of a specific problem, opportunity or need that they are facing and they then might wonder or they are then wondering what are the options, how can I fulfill this need or address this problem, what are the experiences of others in this situation, what challenges can I expect to face as I move forward. Your content should largely be educational and help the individual connect the dots from the problem to how they may be able to solve it. Um, I do remember now that I've been going through this one uh, just yesterday as well, I think. Yeah, it was yesterday. Should have been yesterday, yeah. Um, so if you just want a detailed answer to all the things, please check out the last episode, just really at the end of it. I might have been talking about it for 10 minutes or something. It was quite a long time where I've just been... No, it was actually quite a short time because I kind of were stuck in the first... In the first third, I would say, of the whole um, part that I was going through yesterday. So therefore it might be just very, you know, at the very end of the whole episode. Um, in terms of the largely educational, uh, this is also something that I've been talking about yesterday, but I do quite feel like it is important to say and to point it out once more. At my point of view, uh, being educational is not good for everything, you know. If you're just a YouTube channel and if you're just a YouTube content producer who is mainly kind of providing entertaining for the people, they would just fuck you if you give them something that's educational, you know, they won't just like it. Um, and this has something to do with value. And at my point of view, at least, <laughs> um, value is something that's not only educational, that's not only knowledge, but it's also just some escapism, just some entertaining people, just a, a, lot, of, a lot of just subjective views on value and a lot of factors and facets of value, I would say. Um, an example would be an educational ebook. Find out where your target buyers live online and publish content through and especially for those channels. Um, definitely a good point and totally true. You know, you should always be where your audience is, where your customers are, whether it's the, prep, the platform you're actually liking or not, just go where the attention is. And this is just then I think one of the keys and then actually speaking in their language, producing content that they like, and so on and so on. So just everything is built up on them, not on you, not on your mother, not on your brother, not on your friends, and not on the people who are just talking shit and kind of willing to uh, some kind of play into your game, which is uh, often annoying, I would say, when people just come up to you and just be like, you know, you have to do it like this or that, and why don't you do this and, you know, whatever. First of all, um, at my point of view, at least, and I may have just been reading about it as well just giving critique or criticizing someone just out of nowhere is just something i would say that most of the people do not like why uh, because i think it's uh, especially when it's about their youtube channel especially when it's about their business efforts especially about those things i think they just mainly take it personally and this is not this is not what it, it should be you should just um, maybe come up to the person and ask can i give you some value critiques or some, some constructive criticism and then they might say okay yeah just give me or they say no and then you just have to deal with it but just coming up to the person tell them no you shouldn't be doing it like this and that 
even though you aren't doing it on yourself or you do have some kind of a clue, but not exactly and not not pretty much and especially not that much as the person who is actually doing the thing. And this is also the point, you know, these people are just putting so much work into their business, into their social media efforts, whether it is um, to really just have to deal with people coming up to them and being like, you know, you should do it like this and that. I'm not saying that you shouldn't take criticism. Criticism is something that's great. You know, it always depends on how you kind of value the opinion of others. But, um, but, uh, but yeah, it could be something that's pretty valuable, especially I think from people that are actually in the space you want to be. Um, getting some opinions, getting some criticism, getting some thoughts off them is definitely, I think, going to just grow your thing. And so if you really just want to go into their direction and if you are sure that they know what they're talking about. And this is also a point that a lot of people just talk and talk and talk, even though they do not know that much about it or they haven't achieved something in that realm or in that space as well. But yeah, you know, just just be nice to the people and never be like, you know, fuck you. I've been like this <laughs> quite lately, actually. So because, you know, it's... it's a colleague of mine just came up to me and be like, and was like, you shouldn't use shit all the time in your posts, just use knowledge or something else, you know, as a word, just, it was just about the, but the word, <laughs> and I was immediately like, you know, shut the fuck up, <laughs> um, nothing you should do, just really think about your legacy and try to be nice and as nice to the people as possible, but it was like, you know, why should I, you know, I do have so much to do in terms of making the posts, and just being like, okay, I have to think about every single word that I'm putting out is not something that's kind of, you know, developing or kind of helping me with my creativeness or creativeness and or just, you know, my ability to just create content that's, for me at least, uh, kind of seeming good or kind of just, um, I think about will be good for my audience as well. So yeah, um, blah, 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 blah. Um, at CTAs, which is called to actions that direct visitors to your ta to your gated content, where you can offer them even more value in exchange for their contact information and permission to follow up with gated content. Your readers get premium access to relevant insights, and you enter valuable information into your database, taking you step closer, taking you a step closer to becoming top of mind. Um, the second point, actually, and they just had a kind of formatting. Uh, problem there I think research and consideration so the research stage is often the lengthiest and uh, their entire journey which is why most of your content will be targeted here um, will be targeted here yeah so you need to be patient strategic and perhaps most important consistent and all those three things are at my point of view very very important especially patience because if you're not patient and trying to be as as fast as possible it's not gonna work, you know. Um, a great example that Gary Vee quite lately put out um, was the example with the bodybuilders and the fitness uh, fitness gurus or fitness people on Instagram, especially. Um, all you know, they just know what fitness is all about. They figure it out. They figured it out, and they just know what it is all about, and they know how it works. The thing is, they exactly know, and this is also what I exactly know, building a physique and just being able to just eat as healthy as possible, having the discipline, and just, you know, having that lifestyle as well. So it's not that easy, to be honest. Um, for me, it is because I'm used to it. But for a lot of people, it isn't easy because there's so many temptations to just eat something shit, to not work out, to not do this and that. Um, but these people just still do it. The problem with them is that most of these people just are kind of like, I want to have a business right now. And they do not wait. And they do not just kind of build it up. Or they just do not want to wait for building it up. Which is kind of funny thing. Because they just exactly know that building a physique takes a lot of time and effort. And then they expect of a business effort to just be so fast and so good as well maybe. But yeah. So your goal here is to <clears throat> present your audience with a solution and show them the complexities and expertise involved in doing it well, which will overwhelm them and convince them that they want help in implementing it. An example would be guides and best practices. You know, 
uh, want to encourage your audience to spend more time on your website through tactical, ac sorry, actionable and educational on-site content, you can further establish yourself as a valuable resource on that journey and become a top of mind option for the future purchasing decisions. And decision making, which is actually the third point, in the final stage, your audience has developed a pretty thorough understanding of the problem and the potential solutions that are available. They are now ready to begin evaluating options and make a decision. Here is it ideal to produce content focused on truly identifying your company as the best solution. An example of that would be a case study or case studies in general and comparison tables as well as trial offers. A good content in this final stage communicates urgency, differentiates your company and what you offer from the competition and helps your audience helps your audience evaluate their options to make the best decision. And here are a few points and a yeah. So the first one is help them weigh the pros and cons of their various options. The second one is answer their most pressing questions and concerns. Uh, third one is back up the information you provided with empirical evidence. Uh, what have others done in the past and how did it work out? Uh, like kind of testimonials. At my point of view, testimonials are just really something that's great. Um, but yeah, make a strong evidence-based case for your company. Explain why uh, you are the best option and create comparison guides that make the advantages you offer over the competition cl crystal clear. Um, yeah, and now I've seen that I've kind of losing 16 fucking minutes on this thing that I'm actually also be going through already. But um, yeah, yeah, this is only, yeah, I'm kind of glad that I just did it because I'm kind of filling this episode with some content that is correlated, you know, to the other content because I'm starting with the fifth point and or fifth chapter, um, which is basically or actually the last one. And therefore, it's kind of really, really fucking short. So yeah, start with why. And um, not a good thing for close up. Actually, just really trying to you know get my production value higher, to get just really nice videos, especially because the podcast itself is good because you just hear me speaking and everything is fine, and you can just do whatever. And the thing is with the video, you just need something visual. You know, I have just stepped up the intro, the outro, but in between. Um, there could be maybe more, maybe some other popping things, I don't know, but I'll see, you know, I have to be patient and then just see what my audience, what my future audience is actually liking to have. Um, so people don't buy what you do, so people don't buy what you do, people buy why you do it. I think this is the exact same thing with just everything we are marketing just nowadays, which is quite all about feelings and experiences uh, rather than the actual product. So the product itself could be shit, some kinda, as long as it just provides you the feelings and kinda the experiences you're willing to have or that got marketed. Um, building, a, building your message around the why is absolutely vital for effective communication. The first one is, does your content offer, does your content offer substantive substantive insight into issues and topics other than the highlights of your product and second of all does it provide the reader with actionable tips and analyzes um, if the answer to both is yes you're probably not stuck in the what to create why driven content there is a simple starting point um, which is just let to show you the first one is, why am I creating this content? The second one is, why does my company exist? And the third one is, and why do I do what I do? Actually, pretty nice questions. And I would say, in general, questions are something that's so important and so valuable and so immensely powerful. What the fucking hell? I'm sorry. I'm very sorry if this was just really, really fucking loud. I do not know what I did. To make kind of, st I do not really want to say desk setup because it's <laughs> it's quite a selfie stick. Just really stick into a few weights, like you know this uh, disc disc weights you're just putting onto your dumbbells, 
uh, to, to just really be able to kind of do my videos because this is actually the way I'm doing them. Just really, really, definitely not professional. Definitely not. Now it's working. It's working fine. I'm hoping that it is working a little bit after as well. And today, no, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna head and then I do just have to say a few things. But yeah, so as an example, here is Apple's why driven statement. Everything we do, another close up thing, everything we do, we believe in, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way we challenge the status quo is by making your, our product, um, by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use and user friendly. We just happen to make great computers, want to buy one. And this is quite their thing. You know, they've never been talking about actually having good things, but they're just well designed, they're beautiful and they're easy to use. They have never said that they are cheap. They have never said that they are good. They have never said whatever, whatever else, but this one or these things, they haven't pointed them out. And um, this is quite the funny thing. And um, this is also quite the funny thing about people's expectations. You know, a lot of people just expect from Apple products to be innovative and, you know, whatsoever. But I think innovation is definitely one of the things they can do. Um, in terms of the smartphone market, I think they aren't doing it right now. So they're quite just, yeah, they're quite just, how should I say, um, they're just pretty much doing what everyone is doing, but they're doing it in their way, in the designy way. They're just doing it very, very user friendly. So I just really have to say, and I've been working with, um, you know, Mac OS and, you know, uh, MacBook Pro and uh, an iPhone. Uh, which was actually the the only reason why I bought myself an iPhone because I had to buy a, a MacBook for school because I'm attending a graphic design school and this is quite like you know what the people on the market just use they use just MacBooks and in general Mac OS and Apple products for designing stuff I'm sorry I hope this wasn't too loud all the fucking time because I actually didn't really recognize that the fucking window was open. Um, but actually today was such a beautiful day and such a warm day as well. So it's actually only March and it kind of feels like, okay, it's some, somehow getting or becoming summer right now. Even though just actually, I think it was yesterday. Yesterday spring started in terms of, you know, astronomical calendar or whatever it is. But yeah, the famous last words. I leave you with three questions. And the three questions are good for a close-up. And the close-up is, um, what would happen if you put as much work into your relationship as you do into your work? What would the impact be on the people uh, whom you love the most? And how would your life change? Um, I think these are quite great questions. And because I, I actually love questions just really, really hard in general. But these are quite, quite great, I would say. So use the lessons of this book to connect to people on a deeper level, your team members, your clients, friends, and family. And then the conclusion, and uh, I think we'll go ahead with the action steps first, and then go to the conclusion, and then to the further reading as well. So the action steps. The first one is take the exercises on chapter two to become more helpful, likable, and consistent. Um, I would really like to show you them, because I actually don't know them myself. Um, sorry for reloading the page, but actually to kind of being sure that everything is working as I want it to work. Um, creating a trustworthy brand. I think it's that. So I'll show you. Um, it should definitely be in one of the first episodes. Should I go through it quickly? Okay, I will go if, go through it quickly. I hope this is... Um, yeah, so how to be more helpful or how to be helpful. Share knowledge, um, connect people with what they value. I will only just read the first, I think, sentence because it actually also works. Share resources. This is actually a great thing if you're a designer, just really sharing your resources, if it's Photoshop brushes, if it's graphic assets, if it's something else, 
these are you know pretty great things a lot of people a lot of other people can contribute off or benefit from actually make people aware of opportunities offer transparent feedback become a brand advocate provide referrals volunteer your personal time recognize people give gifts personalize experience how how can i be helpful or ask yourself how can i be helpful and this was it and the likable thing how to be likable um shift the spotlight to others listen a lot more than they talk so listen a lot more than you actually talk don't practice practice selective hearing are thoughtful simple simply because they want to be that kind of a little crazy thing going on with the sentences i'm quite sorry for that Uh, put their stuff away meaning they don't check their phones laptops or watches during conversations give before they receive don't act self-important and because they realize other people are more important so likable people always uh because they realize other people are more important yeah i think you understand what i'm just talking about choose their words don't discuss the failings of others and but readily admit their failings so not talking about the failures somebody other make but just really being like okay i made this wrong i made this wrong i made this wrong i fucked that one up i fucked this one up and so on and i think this really makes you likable but not doing it in a negative way and not doing it like in a way like i'm so poor i've just fucked up so many things but actually being like okay you know i've fucked up that thing and also this thing and i do just see that i kind of <laughs> i'm kind of wearing my fucking shirt away the wrong way around you know like the inside out but never mind never mind so uh, create a knowledge bank and content strategy with your audience in mind the knowledge bank if i remember correctly is quite only a team and all the assets and all the templates and whatever you're using for your design and your thoughts and whatever is in this bank so that every one of this team that actually has to kind of uh, connect with this bank actually can connect with this bank yeah which is actually in chapter three and um, actually if you're interested in just really going a little bit deeper into what i was talking about either just go onto the paul miners website and check it out yourself which is the um john hall uh what is it called top of mind yeah or go to the the first episodes i've always put everything in the description that i was talking about so therefore you should be able to just really um yeah get where you want to go and just see or just you know listen to what you want to listen to and the third one and last one is populate your customer journey funnel with valuable content that will take your potential customer from problem to solution which is you you are the solution or you should be the solution um and this summary just because i read it here there or i'm reading it here and this summary is not intended as a replacement for the original book definitely not because um just reading through the whole book and reading through the actual book is definitely a completely another just experience than going through a summary you know and this is definitely something that i experienced with how to win friends and influence people the summaries are great you know you can find on the internet like, quite a lot because this book is fucking famous but the book itself is way 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 better you know you can just get what he's actually talking about in the most of the summaries and you know i don't want to say most of them but in a lot of them you can't just really get along with what the author there um, is quite talking about it's quite like here are the tips and they do not get explained pretty well so actually going through the books is definitely something different and the conclusion and or the key takeaways when they have problems Uh, people search online for options and information before ever looking for buying solutions totally true and if you're then the person who is actually providing these um, solutions for the problem online for free then they even might be just buying something from you or of you because they know okay you know what you said worked and they just build some kind of a trust with you people don't care about your products and services they care about their needs people think about you at the moment Uh, to to really hold on a little bit um this is actually true they do not really care about what you're offering them they do not care about if it's just a really nice calculator because i'm just seeing my calculator right there <laughs> and they do not care if this is a nice phone they just you know think about what they need and what they just 
feel like and what they need in terms of their feelings. Um, a great explanation, a great kind of example, Seth Godin in his book, uh, This is Marketing, which is, I can't show you, I could show you, I'm not showing you, uh, This is Marketing, uh, said, which is a drill and an 8-bit drill and no one the fuck needs a fucking 8-bit drill. But why a lot of people have it is because they need a hole that's exactly the same amount of radius or whatever it is called. Um, but they do not need the fucking drill. They need the fucking hole. And they need the fucking hole to really just, you know, kind of build up their, uh, what is it called? Bookshelf or something like this, you know? They, and what do they need their bookshelf for? For their books. And what do they need their books for? For knowledge. What do they need their knowledge for? Maybe being happy or expecting getting happy or getting rich or whatever. Hmm. You know, you can really play. This is the great thing about quite a lot of things, I would say. You can just really play them through. And you can just put them in so much situations and so much interesting situations that it's quite just amazing. Quite amazing. Um, people think about you at the moment, they begin looking for a solution for their needs if you are a top-of-mind brand. Uh, to stay on top of mind, listen to your target audience and create valuable content that will guide them uh, from the problem to the solution, which should be you, which is definitely the thing that I, actually the thing that I um, was talking about quite before this one, uh, or this, this section quite. Next time you talk with a new business person, instead of shaking hands and folk focusing on your pitch, you could naturally say, hey, let me send you some of the articles I have written that talk about the exact challenges you have mentioned. Just being nice to them, just offering them something for free. And yeah, maybe you will get back something, but never ever just do give with expectations. I think this will just crush you, you know, because often you won't just get anything back, you know, it's it's what it is. Uh, if you write many referral Emails, give yourself a three minute time limit for each one so you can fire off dozens of referrals without getting overwhelmed and, de and derailed. Use a tool called MixMax to develop basic templates that you can customize. Schedule emails and track opens, clicks, and downloads. Also, MailChimp, um, if you know the software, it's kind of free, but you just at the end of every mail, mail um, you have some kind of an advertising from them so that they actually kind of, you know, uh, yeah, just still get something out of it but uh, but yeah I think I don't know emails is definitely something that I have to work on as well I have to build as well I build a website it's <laughs> a free WordPress website with a WordPress domain like Christopher Walk, uh, dot WordPress dot com. <laughs> Um but yeah I'm, I'm putting up just blog posts there which I think sometimes kind of great most often I think they're not that great, to be honest, because often I do just not have the time, and this is just something that I additionally to what I'm just just doing. And I'm quite doing it like, not like just being really, not like willing to do it, I quite like to do it, and I like to just really go through the process of creating the website, going through, just customizing it, showing what you can actually do on this platform, and you know, whatsoever. I just really like to just test things, I would say. Um, and the next time you're, you're at a conference or event, make an effort to pay close attention and remember one unique detail about everyone you meet. And the last one is write down one of these details on their business card. I enter it into your CRM system and when you follow up after the event, reference the detail. The further readings would be, and I would just go through, um, I will really just go through... Um, uh, uh, the title and the author Gary Vaynerchuk's Thank You Economy actually the video on it if you want to check it out <clears throat> um, you might be able to search it on Google if you just type quite everything in like Christopher Walk, uh, Thank You Economy Gary Vaynerchuk podcast uh, STWT something like this something very very specific and then you might be able I could actually show that up you can actually The thank you economy. If I just put in my name. Hmm. Yeah. 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 You can definitely find it. It's a 44 minute uh, yeah, video. I think it went great. It was one of the better books. 
Um, in general, I don't know. I do really like Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V. <laughs> Um, but, you know, most of the time his books kind of seem like, okay, I know quite a lot of things that are actually standing in them. And I didn't quite understand why a lot of people just really like them that much. Maybe it's just because I've just been listening so much to him that I just know everything quite. And I'm paying very close attention to what he's saying and so on. This might be a reason. But if you're not into him, not. but if you're into him but do not have that much time to really go through every single video and so on, um, it's definitely great to go through the books. Um, because he has a few ones and I think the next one is actually coming pretty soon. Um, the thing is you can learn some new things. So there are actually something standing in them that he has never said anywhere. Because I, I think it is like this because um, I've seen some things or I've read some things that I haven't been stumbling across on any fucking podcast. Um, but you, you know, you have to be sure, I have to say that I haven't been or I have been recording, not recording, but listening to his stuff since uh, 2018 somewhere. And, you know, the probability that he somewhere or somewhen said something about this sort of thing I didn't know is quite fucking big. And the premise of Growth Hacking Marketing by Ryan Holiday the, and the Guidelines book, which is actually the book that is written by the author of this article, which is a 33... Um, yeah, a 80 pages ebook and 115 minute audiobook um, featuring 31 rules from I think actually 40 books, not 33, but 40 books, 40 self help books. Um, just really combined and you kind of uh, mess down into 31 rules. Um, it's, it's quite cheap, you know, if you just would buy all these 33 books, uh, you would pay around $300 or something, and the book or his ebook only costs like 16 or 17 or something like this so maybe you'll check it out um i haven't because there is no summary of it <laughs> um no but yeah but yeah i think this is it i think i gonna um and the episode there and i do really hope that you haven't quite heard it two fucking times um you might wonder why I myself, I'm in the background of the face cam. I don't know. I have searched for a picture that I can use behind it so that it's not quite that boring and, you know, whatever. But I think it's great. Also with the background, it's kind of moving there. It's I think it's kind of just really aesthetic. I like it. You know, it's my style, definitely. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, with that being said, I do just really hope you have a wonderful day or you had a wonderful day or you will have a wonderful day and or night for all those three things and yeah do not forget to think about your legacy and about you giving back to the people because this is important and you know nevertheless i'll just wish you the best wealth health happiness and success especially happiness because happiness is fucking key and i'll see you actually the next time and i hope you're just really doing well i see you today actually because i'm actually recording the next episode right after this one, I think. Maybe not, maybe I just... I, I think I have to. Never mind. I see you.